And in that regard, at this university, at the University of Sydney, uh, a group led by uh, Professor John Prinius have come up with some intriguing results that suggest that the cells that lay down the myelin, cells called, as I think you know, oligodendrocytes, may in fact in some people, on some occasions, um, start to die before the immune attack arrives. Now that then asks the question of what might be causing those cells to die, what are the consequences and how can we stop those consequences? So that I, I, I would be giving an unfair description if I didn't say that the two, there are two dominant sciences uh, in the understanding of MS and in current thinking towards future control and that's the field of immunology and, uh, and neurobiology. In one of those components, the genes that influence the, uh, the immune system, we've come a long way and we're well ahead of the rest of the world uh, in, uh, in science. However, finding those genes is the starting point, not the end point. We now really have to work on how those, how are minor variations in the function of those genes adding up uh, to provide a genetic background that gives susceptible, susceptibility to MS. There'll probably be 30 or 40 of these genes. To have MS, you will not have to inherit the associated variant of all of those genes. There'll be some. There'll be some that you won't have, there'll be some you will have, and that'll vary in different parts of the world. And I'm pleased that Australia is right up there in getting Australian samples tested so we know what happens with patients in Australia. But the uh, experiments that need to be done to understand exactly how those genes are working have already started and are already going uh, at a rapid pace. Uh, I would look forward to speaking on in two years' time on the current thinking of the, uh, of the cause of MS because I believe I will have a great deal more to say. The journey ahead of us relies on human ingenuity. It relies on the cooperation of people with MS and of um, organisations that want to support that and it relies a great deal on the financial resources. Uh, the more those resources, the sooner uh, will come the day uh, that I referred to when all of these diseases, not just MS, are part of the history of humankind. Thank you. Uh, two extremely good questions. Um, I'll start with the second question, and, and that is if, it's a genetic, if genes are so important, why aren't there more members, uh, families have it? The diseases you're talking about where you can predict whether children will have it or not are all Jews diseases due to a single gene defect. So Huntington's career, for example, if, if you have it, your children have a one in two chance because it's a dominant single gene disease. For recessive diseases like cystic fibrosis, both parents have to pass down the gene and you have to get two copies of it. So if they do have, both parents carry the gene, one in four of their children. So you will see within families much more familial clustering of the disease than you will see with the diseases that are referred to as being diseases of complex genetics. And that includes all of the major autoimmune diseases. So type 1 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus, psoriasis, multiple sclerosis. Now these are complex genetics because there isn't one single gene. There's a whole set of them. I've mentioned to you that we will probably get around the 40 mark, of which you may need only half a dozen of those to have been inherited from your parents uh, to then act with an environmental trigger. And I'll come back to the virus in a minute. Uh, that means that uh, the probability that you, you will pass exactly that set on to your children is very much less than the exact mathematical probabilities where there's just a single gene involved. So that means your children, or if you have a brother or sister, their risk may be 15 or 20 times the population so there's a definite genetic effect, but uh, they're still unlikely throughout their lifetime to get MS because it's, if, if you have a relatively rare disease and you multiply it by 20, you're still an uncommon disease. It's still not a common, not a common disorder. However, if you look at identical twins, where all their genes are the same, somewhere between about 30% uh, to 50% of, uh, of them, they'll both have MS. So when all the genes are in place, very, very high chance uh, uh, that, that MS will be seen in both, in both members. 
Viruses as the environmental trigger in the equation have been studied for over 40 years uh, uh, in MS. And when I did my PhD at this university in the 1970s, I did work on that, trying to work it in with the genetic typing. Uh, there still is a significant chance that there is a virus um, that triggers some of the events that lead to MS in people who are genetically susceptible. Um, first of all, there is a virus called Epstein-Barr Epstein virus that causes um, glandular fever that does appear to increase the setting of the immune system towards autoimmunity. And it's almost certainly one of the environmental factors that adds to a whole range of other factors. It isn't the MS virus. Uh, most of the population end up getting glandular fever and have Epstein-Barr virus. Uh, my, only a small proportion of people get MS. But we see the same effect probably in type 1 diabetes and other autoimmune diseases, that the glandular fever virus uh, that stimulates cells of the immune system uh, can, can increase the, the setting. So when we're looking at environmental factors, we're not looking at one factor that causes MS. We're looking at several probable factors, and maybe some of them adding in combination. Perhaps to understand that a little more, you may have heard of a disease called lupus. Uh, I'm not a neurologist, I'm a clinical immunologist, but I've researched MS and the immunology of MS for 30 odd years. But when I look after patients with lupus, if they don't go out in the sun, they don't get their skin rash. Well, some do, but most of them don't. So that's an environmental additive. They don't get lupus unless they've got genetic background for it. Um, but in order for that genetic background to come out, there is probably viruses and other things, but the actual way in which the disease is expressing itself depends upon ultraviolet light. Um, the ultraviolet light theory in multiple sclerosis and other autoimmune diseases isn't through a direct effect on the skin. It's, we believe, um, yet to be proven, but good chance, that it's through vitamin D metabolism. And vitamin D was discovered because of its role in bones, in keeping your bones thick, but it's actually a very important molecule of the immune system. It has very definite effects on, on immune function, including the very exciting ones discovered by uh, Ram and his colleagues uh, recently in the way it interacts with the HLA genes, but it does things more broadly uh, than that. Uh, there's a lot more we need to know about the immune system and about the function of the brain, and every year something new comes along and those of us working in MS say, well, how does that, how can we drag that piece of information across? Uh, I thought by, when I was a PhD student a fair while ago, I thought, you know, in the next 10 or 20 years, we'll know the virus that's stimulating it. Well, with massive effects, massive efforts rather, we still don't yet have it. We, haven't, we certainly haven't ruled it out. Genes are not everything, and the environment, as Ram suggested, is probably has a, a, a larger overall effect. But if we know the genes, we know the pathways in the body that are causing the disease, we can block them with treatments. Um, there, there are genes which, genetic factors, which are common, to, we believe, which will turn out to be common to a number of autoimmune diseases. And then there are genes which are specific to each of those diseases. So that it's not surprising that you do find an increase of other autoimmune diseases uh, in, in somebody who has one of them. So with MS, there's, a, there's definite evidence for other autoimmune diseases being more common, particular th autoimmune thyroiditis, thyroid disease, uh, psoriasis to some extent. Diabetes is a little bit more complex. But uh, overall, if you look in the family members of uh, people with MS who don't have MS themselves, there's also an increased rate of autoimmune disease. So we believe the explanation for that is quite simply that there is um, a genes that are increase your overall risk of autoimmunity and then those which determine which organ in the body is attacked.